This is an ultra rare 1957 Mercedes Benz 300 SL Coupe, commonly known as a Mercedes Goldwing. Based on the successful Mercedes SL racing sports car that won the Carrera Panamericana and the 24 Hour of Le Mans in 1952, the success and excitement of the consumer version of the Mercedes Benz 300 SL Goldwing was only enhanced when it was revealed in February of 1954 at the International Motor Sports Show in New York to much fanfare. The most obvious and unique feature on the Mercedes-Benz are the Goldwing style doors. To open the doors, you first must push this little serrated button in, which pops the handle out. You then place your fingers in where the finger grips are and pull. This unlatches the door and the door will gracefully lift up. Once the door is open, you will notice how high the door seals are and how deep they are. This is due to the very lightweight tubular space frame in this car, which is a carryover from the earlier race cars. With this tubular frame and extra height of these door sills, traditional doors would not work. So Mercedes had to develop a more or less unconventional door, which resulted in the center roof-hinged gullwing door. You will notice the overall smooth lines of the Mercedes 300 SL gullwing coupe. And then we notice these smooth lines are interrupted by these unique features above the wheel wells. These are known as eyebrows, and were designed to smooth airflow over the fenders and aid in the prevention of water being sprayed up onto the windscreen. You will notice that these eyebrows were also carried through to the rear wheel openings to provide a similar airflow pattern, but also for uniform design appearance. Another great feature on the Mercedes Gullwing are these louvered vents on the side fenders. These are functioning louvers, which allow airflow through the engine bay to help cool the engine. These also became a design hallmark of these cars. A question we often get asked here at the museum are, what are these holes in the lower rocker panel areas? Those holes are access locations for the jack to be inserted if you needed to raise the car up to change the tire, for example. The side windows on the Gullwing Coupe were removable but did not roll down due to the significant curve in the door. Due to the lack of roll-down side windows, passengers could get very warm on the inside, especially in warm weather. To aid in passenger comfort, the car has a series of vents, including these pass-through vents on the roof. These roof vents are completely open from the interior of the car to the exterior, providing unhindered airflow through the interior and out the back via these roof vents. Another feature that you notice on the Mercedes Gullwing are the slim wraparound tail lights at each corner at the rear. You'll notice incorporated into these tail lights are a red lens for stop and tail light and an amber lens for their turn signal. However, there are no reverse lights on the back of these cars as that was not an option on the performance themed Gullwings. Wings. When the 1957 Mercedes 300 SL Roadster was introduced mid-year in 1957, the tail light on those cars changed and incorporated a white lens for backup lights. The trunk on the 300 SL Gullwing Coupe is accessed through a key. You would first move this little flap and then insert your key to unlock the trunk. Once it's unlocked, you simply lift up on it. You do have to secure it open with this little rod that unclips and comes down and fastens here on the side. Once the trunk is open, you'll notice there's not a lot of room in here except for the storage of the spare tire. You'll also notice that the tools and pouch are stored here. With each car came a set of specialized tools for that car. The convenient tool pouch included just about any tool that might be needed to do general repairs on the car and were embossed with the Mercedes-Benz name on them. Over on the right side of the spare tire is storage for the jack. Another unique feature inside the trunk is the location of where you fueled the car. Simply twist to remove the cap to expose the fuel fill tube to add fuel. Yes, you'd have to open the trunk lid to gain access to the fuel fill tube. As we just noticed when we had the trunk open, there was no room for luggage. While well, Mercedes took care of that by offering optional luggage that you could purchase with the Gullwing Coupe. And we see here two pieces of luggage through the rear window. Notice they match the interior of this car. The straps here will fasten to secure the luggage down. You can see the bottom suitcase has a gentle curve to the back end of it. That is so this lower, larger suitcase conforms to the curved body panel of the car, fitting into the space like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle. This fits in very smoothly with other suitcase resting on top. You'll notice on this car that due to the height of the door seal and the depth of it, getting in and out of this car can be somewhat of a challenge. Mercedes took that into consideration. 
by making the steering wheel available to tilt under. There's a little lever over here on the side that you can pull to release the steering wheel. The steering wheel then flips down, giving you more access for your knees and feet. Once you're seated in position, simply pull the steering wheel up and relock it. Now you're set to take off for a drive. As we're sitting behind the steering wheel, you'll notice a large array of gauges, knobs, and controls. You'll also notice that none of them are marked or labeled. This kept the dash with a very clean appearance. If you own this car and had the owner's manual, you could easily figure them out. And notice a little red light up here at the very top, and this is the directional signal light. When you turn the directional signals on, it will blink whether you're going right or left. The little light immediately below is a high beam headlight indicator, so when you have your high beams on, that light will glow, let you know your high beams are activated. This light feature down here, which we will demonstrate in another video when we start the car, is the choke control light. When you have the choke pulled out while starting the car, this light will glow white and won't turn off until you turn the choke off. The red light over here is a charging electrical system light. It will come on when the ignition key is turned to the on position or once the car is started and will remain on until the car has reached optimal idling speed at which time it will shut off. The two larger gauges sitting front and center, the left one is the tachometer showing how many revolutions per minute your engine is turning. And on the far right is a speedometer going from 0 to 160 miles per hour. This gauge also includes the odometer showing total miles the car has been driven and a daily trip meter which can easily be reset by simply turning this little knob to the right of the gauge. These slide levers control ventilation on the driver's side. The bottom one, by moving it left or right, will open or close the ventilation vent to your footwell. And this one up here opens or closes ventilation to the driver's side windshield. Over here we have an ignition timing adjustment turn switch. Here we have the fuel gauge and this one says full to reserve. Over here we have the oil pressure gauge. On this side of the dash, the first thing we'll notice is this lever on the right side of the steering column. This is a high beam flash control. So if you have your headlights on, you can pull this lever down and it will temporarily turn your bright lights on or by releasing, turn them back off. Useful to alert other cars that you wish to pass or as a friendly reminder for them to dim their bright lights. Here is the water temperature gauge and over here the oil temperature gauge, both of these in Fahrenheit. This switch here turns on your instrument panel lights by simply pulling out. The switch here is a parking light and headlight switch. Left is off, center is parking lights on, right is headlights on. The pull switch up here turns on the auxiliary fuel pump. To actuate it, simply pull the knob out, after which a control light on the switch will light up as long as the pump is in operation. This switch should be used when starting the car. You'll want the pump to run for a few moments before attempting to start the car. It is also useful when fuel is running low as it conveys remaining fuel to the engine. This switch here is a left-right parking light toggle switch. If you want just your left parking lights on, that would be to the left or to the right for the right parking lights. This is the keyed ignition switch. Turn it one notch to turn the electrical system on or turn it all the way to engage the starter. Here we have the wiper control and immediately above the wiper control is the clock. The levers here control the interior temperature. Moving the lever from left to right increases the temperature. The lower level controls temperature to the left or the driver's side, while the top lever controls temperature to the passenger's side. A rather unique feature in the Mercedes Gullwing is that it has two horn buttons. One is easily accessible by the driver at the center of the steering wheel. There's also one on the passenger side. So, if a passenger sees the necessity to honk the horn, they've got easy access to it. And to the right of the horn button is a cigar lighter. This control here turns on the fan for the defroster or, or heater. Similar to the left side, these slide levers control ventilation on the passenger side. The bottom one will open or close the ventilation vent to your footwell. And this one up here opens or closes ventilation to the driver's side windshield. 
This car is equipped with the optional AM-FM Becker Mexico radio. It's positioned just behind the gear shift lever. The speakers are located in the door openings. You'll notice on the dashboard there's this beautiful 300SL insignia where you might typically expect a glove box. There is no glove box in these cars due to the tubular frame being directly behind the dash, blocking any room for a large opening. Mercedes took this into consideration by putting pockets on each kick panel. As you can see here, we have storage for the owner's manual or other items you might wish to store in these convenient pockets. The pedals on the floor are very traditional, with the far right pedal being your gas or accelerator pedal, the middle pedal your brake, and the far left one being your clutch pedal. Notice a little silver gray button on the floor. That's a high-low beam switch. So if you have your lights on and tap that button with your foot, you turn your bright lights on. Tap the button again to shut them off. Remember earlier we had the control in the steering column? That's simply a flash option. They don't stay on with that control. You simply push that lever to flash the light. And as soon as you let off, it dims them again. So this lever is just a flash option. To the left of the driver's leg is a Tommy lever. By pulling that lever, it releases the hood. To the left of where your feet are, on the driver's side, is the handbrake. Simply pulling up on this lever will set the parking brake. Push the button and drop it back down to release it. This is the copy of the original data card for this car. You'll notice that there are three numbers designated on this card. This one to the far right is the body number, which can be located right inside the door seal. Let's take a look at where it is. Right inside the door seal, beside where the left leg of the driver would be, is this little plate. You can see that the body number matches the number on the data card, letting you know that this car has the correct body for when it rolled out of the factory back in 1957. The next data card number is the engine number. Notice that the engine number on here is 7500058. We'll find the engine number on the engine itself right here, 7500058, showing this is the same engine that the car was delivered new with. The final number that you'll see is the chassis number. This one is 750053. The chassis number is a number that is typically used as a vehicle identification number for titles. The chassis number is located on the firewall of the engine bay, and the upper right number shows chassis number 750053. These three matching numbers show that the car maintains the same body, engine, and chassis as the car was born with. Thank you for visiting the Midwest Dream Car Collection and for letting us share with you some of the features of this beautiful automobile. Mm -hmm.